Hello, today I'm going to show you the proof of the sine rule. So the sine rule is about triangles, so I'll quickly draw one. And it's basically about the ratio between the side length and the opposite angle. The type of triangle doesn't matter, so we can have an isosceles, a right triangle, scaling, anything that we want. Doesn't make a difference. And we'll label these this triangle then. So the corners get labelled with capitals, so I'll have A, B and C. And the sides then get labelled with the opposite angle. So we can see here is A, the side opposite that over here then can be labelled with the, the lowercase a. Similarly, this one is going to be B and this one will be C. So I'll quickly note down what the sine rule is. Basically, we have little a divided by the sine of the angle opposite. It. And this is going to be true all the way around. So B over sine B is the same as C over sine C. So effectively, this ratio is always the same, no matter which angle it is, is how we can think about it. You might sometimes see this written upside down, so the reciprocal of each fraction. That's completely fine if you imagine just sort of dividing A down, dividing B down, and then multiplying up both the signs, and you'd end up with the reciprocal of both the fractions. So let's have a go at proving this then. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line straight down the centre here. It's not down the centre of the triangle, but it needs to go from one of the corners and then intersect the opposing side at a right angle. And we'll call this length h then. And I'm just going to redraw this c out of the way so we can think about this as having a location. We'll call that x. And the next thing we're going to do then is think about trigonometry. And we know trigonometry can tell us that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're going to use this fact on the two triangles, the two right hand uh, the right angle triangles that have been created here. So we've got this triangle, A, C and X, and then another triangle on the right hand side, X, C and B. So we'll start off with the left. So we can see that sine of A will be equal to the opposite, which is H, divided by B, the hypotenuse. And we can do the same on the right hand side. And we get sine of B is equal to H, the uh, opposite, divided by A, the hypotenuse. And now if we go and rearrange these, making H a subject in both, we get that H is equal to B sine alpha, which is equal to A sine, uh, sorry, sorry, not sine alpha, but sine A, which is equal to A sine B on the other side. And now if we focus on these two parts of the equation, what we can see is by dividing by both the signs that b over sine b is equal to a over sine a, which is part of our uh, sine rule there at the top. We could do the same by sort of rotating this triangle around, making a the base and thinking of drawing a line that goes from this corner here all the way down there, and we'd get something that involves c, um, or similarly like this corner and to this line over here. And we get something that involves C, and we'd get basically the third part of this equation. But it's the same no matter which way around you do it. You always get just two of them, um, and you have to do it the second one to get the third one up. But this will always be true for any of the angles, doesn't matter which one. So yeah, that's the sign rule. Nice and simple.